Welcome back to Switch to Linux and another Distro Wars. And today we are going to look at Q4OS versus Sparky Linux on Plasma. And both of these are based on Debian. Both of them are designed for lightweight hardware and both of them promise to make the Debian experience a little bit easier to manage. And there's some stuff I found in Sparky that I didn't realize was there when I did my uh, discussion of it the other day. And so... Cool, we're gonna have a look at that. Before we dive into that, my new science fiction book is officially out for order now. Woohoo! And so uh, this is, uh, actually I started writing this, I think it was uh, July or August of last year, so we just pushed it live out. Uh, right now you can get it directly from me if you're in United States. Uh, take note that uh, as of this time in the nearing the end of May, uh, I will not have my first round of inventory until between June 7th and June 14th. So all books are officially pre-order right now. Although you can get the um, you can get the ebooks, and probably by Friday you will be able to buy the audiobook directly from me as an instant download. It'll roll out to other systems probably within the next couple of weeks. Uh, we also have Amazon there. If you buy Amazon, that is available globally. So you can head on over tlm.li forward slash s or synaptergy.com. You can grab any updates on the newsletter. You can hear the preview of the audiobook uh, that's coming up. You can read chapter one right here on the website and you can go directly from the author or you can go uh, over from Amazon and pick up the book over there. So keep an eye on that. And uh, if you, uh, the net, when I start seeing all of the eBooks, um, excuse me, all of the audiobooks rolling out, uh, then I'm going to send out one more newsletter on that. And that's going to be the last newsletter until a possible sequel arises. So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and dive on into our discussion. So Q4OS, this is kind of designed mostly for a business approach. So this isn't really catered towards the basic home user. It's more catered towards a business type approach, but that actually means it has a lot of tools in it that's going to make a system work well. I did find the installation is your basic installer, but once the installation is done, which goes very quickly, on first boot, you kind of decide which profile you like. Do you want to do a desktop profile that has a lot of applications? Do you want to stick with a minimal install? There's a few other interesting tools on there. It detects if you're in a virtual machine and offers to install the guest editions for you. There's a lot of other cool features and system tools. Also, they do have, uh, we're running Plasma, but they do have this uh, theme of theirs that actually very much resembles Windows XP. So if you do want something that's a Windows XP type build, uh, definitely one for you. Uh, even some of the back Background, the screens that we're going to see do resemble Windows a bit, which means that it's not necessarily quite as thoroughly themed uh, because it does deviate from basic plasma theming in some regions. Sparky Linux. Now, Sparky Linux, we did a video on this one the other day. I'm going to refer you to that for the installation. If you want to do the simple installer, you're limited in your desktop environments. But if you do the minimal CLI installer that we did on a video um, last week, that I'll go ahead and link to the cards and, and in the description there, you can see how to install it and you have like full flexibility on the things that get installed. There's also some extra tools that will definitely help you out. So in our discussion today, we've already just talked briefly about the installer. As far as these two distros, the easiest install is definitely Q4 OS, although you're more limited on your desktop environments. Sparky also has some easier installer if you like one of uh, just a couple of desktops, but if you want a wide variety, at least there's an option for that. And uh, that makes method will allow you to install other desktop environments as well. Overall though, Sparky is definitely a more advanced Linux distribution. It's not going to be quite as easy to install if you want to customize everything. Uh, so that's that. Most of the rest of this we are going to look at, um, we're going to look at uh, inside the video. We're going to look at the RAM, uh, the basic administration, what do the uh, desktop environments uh, offer to us, our kernels, which I think should be the same. They're both based on Debian 10. How does the theming look? And um, we've already uh, looked at our ease of install. And what's, I have another note here. What's that? Oh, that was a note for Q4OS. So we'll get into that. So let's go ahead and start by having a look at Q4OS. And uh, with Q4OS running, then uh, we'll kind of walk through all of our all of our basic information there. 
All right, so here we are on our login screen, basic Plasma login screen. We'll go ahead and enter our super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. And we can see that we dropped to a full screen Plasma desktop. Now, the cool thing about Q4 OS is on first install, it's going to say, hey, what desktop, do you, uh, what screen resolution would you like to run in? So it doesn't detect it automatically, but it gives you a, dial or a um, dialogue box prompt there to give you the the basic information there. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's see if HTOP is installed in here or not. So HTOP is installed. Well, you can see that we are running here on uh, Q4 OS. It's running on about 504 megabytes of RAM. So very, uh, very nice, not, not too bad at all. Uh, let's go ahead and I gotta remember what's my uh there you go. We'll just do that. <laughs> I was like, what is the exit command for that one again? Alright. So we are running kernel 419. And so definitely a little bit older, but that's exactly what we would expect running Debian. Okay, with that basic stuff out of the way, let's have a look at what they give us. On our welcome screen, we have a variety of options here. The run the desktop profiler, this will automatically set and configure some applications. So while your initial install of Q4OS goes really quickly, you're prompted to run a desktop profiler on first install, and then this is actually going to be a part that's going to take a long time. And I'm not sure where it went. There we go. So you have the option for a full feature desktop with a web browser, office suite, and recommended application sets. We have a basic with just common utilities, system tools, and libraries. You have an ultimate minimal desktop that you can do everything yourself. All right, so that is uh, what we have over there. Now we also have, we can turn on or off desktop applications. We have switched to kickoff start menu. So we have our basic application launcher there. Um, Let's see. Oh, that's only available for Trinity. Sorry, we can't see what that looks like. We do have the option right here to install proprietary codecs. So you can click on this. It's going to give you a pop-up there to install the codecs. And then we have the application installer. So this is kind of a custom application installer. Now, this is very limited in what it has. So I did check, like, Evolution is not in here. Um, so it is available to install. It's just you'd have to... Uh, run up, load up the package manager, which in this case is Discover. You can see your desktop profiler here, and you can install selected applications. So you can come in here and kind of search, and they only have, you know, I guess 50 fairly popular applications in here that you can install. So you can just go ahead and click on these and install the application. Very limited, but it does give us a nice uh, streamlined uh, listing of applications. If you want more, you need to click on the package manager there, and it's going to give you uh, Discover. And of course, once we're in Discover, if you did want to run Evolution, uh, then you can actually search for Evolution, and it will be in here. All right, so you can install anything. You just need to run two different package managers to go ahead and install things. So that's kind of what we have there. Uh, we have screen scaling. This is kind of your initial setup stuff, hardware. And it did give us the option to install VirtualBox guest editions because we are running a virtual machine. All right, so as far as applications, I went with the, the basic uh, desktop one, which has um, an Office suite. So LibreOffice is what that has in it. And let's see what other applications we happen to have. So mathematics, science, um, basic card games from Debian. Whoop, I've already been there. Graphics, we just have um, the drawing program. We have an image scanning application, document viewer. So very basic stuff. Um, ew, we have Google Chrome or Conqueror. Ew, why'd you give us Google Chrome? Nasty. Uh, we have Thunderbird. We have Multimedia Clementine. We have Clementine and VLC. Under our office, uh, we have, of course, our LibreOffice suite. And basic settings. We do have Synaptic Package Manager as well. So if you want to just use that, and then we have just various other K applications as well. Let's go ahead and have a look at our um, system settings. I want to have a look at 
if there's any custom theming in here or not. And uh, it looks like there's not. So we have our breeze, we have our breeze dark. There's nothing in here that's out of the ordinary. So it's pretty much a vanilla plasma uh, build. My guess is the plasma version is going to be the same on both of these, which is going to be 513 in Debian. I can't remember for sure. 514 is our plasma version. I'm going to write that down in case um, in case they're actually different. 514.5. So that is kind of a, a brief nutshell on this one. Um, not bad overall. It gives you a nice plasma with some extra tools. It does help you with some of the initial configurations and setups out of the box, making it, if you're kind of a computer newbie and you want the plasma build, this is probably the best one of the two that you're going to want to use because it doesn't require going into the terminal for stuff. Uh, I know I did on this video, but that was more of convenience than necessity. So now we'll kind of jump on in and have a look at what Sparky looks like. All right, so here we are on Sparky's screen. You can see that they are effectively the same. Um, same desktop, probably the same versions. Well, there we are, loading full screen. And that kind of happened automatically for me, so yay! All right, so here we are. We are landing on the Sparky desktop now. Now, one of the things that you notice, it's subtle, but Sparky actually has its own theme uh, installed. So it is going to be a little bit different. Let's go ahead and run our, oh, we don't have HTOP installed. sudo apt install HTOP. Enter my super secret password, and we'll go ahead and get HTOP installed so we can have a look at what it looks like. All right, so this is running 400 and looks like 466. So a little bit lighter. We're uh, we're about 40 megabytes lighter on this guy. So woohoo! Look at that. All right, and our kernel version and same exact kernel version, which is exactly what we predicted, being is that they are um, they are both running the same version of Debian. Whoa. And let's go look at our about system. And we are running 5.14.5. So once again, exact same versions of Plasma. So across the board, they're pretty much the same. So what is your difference going to be? Well, one of the biggest things that Sparky has, and I did not notice this um, when I was doing my video the other day on Sparky. So bonus for you guys. Aptus. I'm like, what is Aptus? Never seen this. And it's actually a Sparky specific application. Wow. This guy here, you can clean the user cache. You can edit repositories, fix broken packages. You can install repositories, refresh package lists. Basically, this is a list of all of the things that you would generally have to do through a terminal in Apt um, that you can just come in here and just like click upgrade the system. Uh, click install from repository. You can search for a package. Now some of these guys, so like install package from a repository, uh, what this is actually going to do is it's going to boot up a screen and it's going to, going to say, Hey, what would you like to install? Um, let's just give it evolution and boom, look at that. We have a terminal command, just hit yes. And now we can get, um, evolution installed really quickly. We have that's accessories, all your codecs, like, Hey, the other one we had, Codex. This has Codex, baby. Uh, we got a lot of things to choose from here. Uh, all the different things that you want. All right, we are done with evolution. Here's our audio players, audio tools. Look at that. We got our door up there. Do we have LMMS in here or not? That's one my friend uses. Not seeing it. All right. Uh, video players, other video tools. Desktop environment, so you want to run desktop environments. Hey, somebody wanted to run uh, common desktop environment. Hey, there you go. You can just go ahead and go right here. Just go ahead and why not, you know? Hey, 
Uh, so it will install a new desktop. You've chosen and replace the old settings. Okay, so you want to be careful with this. I'm going to hit exit um, just because I haven't tested that prior to coming in here. But I mean, you can see just this wide variety of stuff, including, hey, the Trinity one. <laughs> that was the option that we had in the previous part. Um, we have games, office suites, graphics, uh, web tools, including Google Chrome if you do want it. Google Earth, if you want it, you have a classic Water Fox, you have current Water Fox, Vivaldi, Tor Browser, Sea Monkey, Pale Moon, Conqueror, Chromium, Brove. Brove? It's the Brove browser, yo. <laughs> Brave. All right, here's your IM, email applications. So you can see this guy is just an amazing system overall. I didn't even realize that this was in here, I, I found it quite by accident. So this guy here takes care of all of your Debian administration without having to go into the terminal. So you guys are like, I don't want to go to the terminal. Hey, Sparky, they got a tool for that. I didn't even know that existed. Of course, you can also still install things with Synaptic Package uh, Manager. And I don't know if Discovery is on this guy or not. Uh, it looks like we do not have Discovery, though. So Sparky says, yeah, I know Discovery sucks. We're just going to leave it off. All right. So other tools that we have. Um, and I think most of these uh, come directly with it. Uh, I did install the Evolution web browser. I think I installed um, Firefox ESR on the installs uh, when I did the installation of it. Here's the full LibreOffice suite. Basic settings, again, system settings. Now, what I did mention is that the theming is actually slightly different because Sparky does come with its own themes. So it basically took the existing ones and did a few little tweaks to it. Uh, both desktop themes, look and feel, things like that. So uh, it does actually put a little bit more of consistency. So my guess is that if you wanted to run uh, run Debian with a desktop environment and don't want to worry about theming it well, Sparky might be a good option. It'd be good to check other desktop environments uh, though as well. So overall though, the, the, uh, the tools, the utilities, the simplicity of Sparky, once you get it installed, I think Sparky is definitely the better OS. The challenge becomes the installation process itself. And so here comparing these two, um, Q4 OS, more limited on your desktop environments, but it's really not designed for a large massive of desktop environments. It's more designed actually for a business environment. Let's get something up that is easy to use and you don't have to make a lot of decisions. So if that's you, Q4 OS is going to be the better choice. If you want the more customizable and the tools to learn a little bit more about Linux, learn a little bit more about Debian without going into the terminal, you'll have to uh, try this. <laughs> of course, the downside of Sparky is that you need to reinstall this one through the terminal. However, you could probably use the basic uh, the basic uh, installation for Sparky that's all front end, all GUI based, install it, open up Aptis, and switch to the desktop environment that you want. That's probably going to be an option for you as well. So if that were, were true, and my guess is it probably is, I think Sparky might be the better of these two distributions. Where uh, Q4 OS does outshine is to say, hey, here's a few options on first install. What would you like to do? And then you have your system working. You do have more options to, to look at and to choose from on Sparky. So those are my thoughts on these two desktops, uh, these two Linux distributions. Let me know your thoughts on all these in the comments down below.